Hello, Kardec Radio. We are live streaming. We're just a few seconds away from 7 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, all time zones in between, and all time zones around the world. We are live on Kardec Radio Facebook page, and I am so happy to be here. We had just, uh, my family and I, we just watched uh, No Solar. You know, we watch it about once every year or so, and it's just a wonderful movie. I would recommend anyone to go see No Solar. It's a great movie, so I, I can't recommend it enough. So tonight, what are we talking about? We are going to talk about, this is our next, it's like in Spiritism 101, the third revelation. And we're to the point in the book, we're going through the book, uh, chapter by chapter, parts of chapter, parts of chapter, depending how we leave. Oh, a little windstorm coming up. Um, and we're going to talk about the levels of spirits. Hello, Matthew. How are you doing? So before I start, first I want to say we are here because of Spiritism. Spiritism was founded by Alan Kardec in the Spirits book. This is the headwaters of everything. This is, this is what Jesus talked about when he said, I'm going to send you a consoler with more information. Alan Kardec codified information from many, many high spirits. It was wonderful what information he brought us. He brought us you know, he set a questions of a thousand nineteen questions, and he had mediums from different geographical era, areas, different different mediums. And if they didn't agree on the same messages when they asked the question, it did not get into the spirits book. And as I said before, you can go to my site, and you can click on his picture up on the top right hand navigation bar. And you'll go to the EDICI bookstore. You can buy his books there. You can buy other books by Devaldo Franklin, Chico Xavier, and other spiritist authors. And then my books are below his his picture on the right-hand navigation side where you can find the books back behind me on my bookshelf, How to Live, Heaven and Below, and other ones, especially. And this book, Spiritism 101. But this book, if you go on to our Facebook site, Spiritism in the Spirit World Around Us, you will, on the file section, you can download this book for free on PDF. So, and also, if you go to my site, nwspiritism.com, you can send me an email. I will send you a copy of that on PDF. If you want it on uh, Amazon Kindle, it's 99 cents. And I think it's $5.99 if you want the paperback version. So, please, it's a, hopefully it's a good introduction for you to, for spiritism. So I hope, I hope you in, in, enjoy that. So now let's talk about um, the level of spirits. So we talked about, when we talked about spiritism in our previous two broadcasts on the other Sundays, and of course I forgot to say this is Sunday, April 28th, 2019. How exciting to be here with you. So you are now aware that we live in the midst of spirits, and there are many different types of spirits. And up front, I want to let you know, and I've said this before, that when we die, we don't become intelligent, caring angels of mercy, right? We become spirits which retain our memories, personalities, and characters we had during our physical life. In other words, people who were mean and petty in this life that they're living right now are the same in death. People who are caring, kind, and always willing to lend a helping hand in life are the same in death. We are who we were. We continue. This is why it's so important that the, the only thing we take with us in this life, what we learn, the reason we're here on earth, is to better our character and our personality, and that is to get rid of the bad primitive emotions, anger, envy, jealousy, revenge, all that, and replace them with good emotions, love, charity, fraternity, and honesty. So, and this, this planet, God is not going to let uncaring, immature spirits loose on the universe. We're in this little, you're kind of like a middle school or junior high, right? Most of them should be like more of a prison than a school because the kids are, you know, it's just hardly, they can barely control themselves, God love them all. So the same thing for us here. 
we must finish our assigned courses and graduate before we will be given the right to ascend outside of the influence of this planet. Now, given the varieties on humans on this planet, it should be no surprise to learn about the difficult and different levels of spirits which reside amongst us. They're all there. And the spirit realm tells us there is an unlimited number of, of levels of spirits. But for our consumption, the spirits book has divided spirits into the following orders. The third order is imperfect spirits. Predominance of matter over spirit. These type of spirits are more influenced by material desires. And in other words, they are, they are the vast majority of people on earth who are reincarnated now and the people who, who die and pass on in spirit. Unfortunately, they have a predilection for evil. They are ignorant, full of faults, pride, and selfish. Within the third order, they are further divided into five classes. And all the, the detail about these type of spirits are covered in questions 100 to 106 in this book, 100 to 106. So please, I'm not going to tell you everything. I want you to explore and dive further. Be, it, it, you can't believe how interesting this is. Second order, good spirits, the predominance of spirit over matter. These spirits desire to ascend. They possess many qualities for good although they still have imperfections to repair. Good spirits are further divided into four classes, and questions 107 to 111 describe each class of good spirits. Then there are the first order. That is what we are all trying to be. We, we all uh, Let me tell you right now, we all start out as primitive spirits. We're, we're all the very moderate order of spirits, but then we become as we go life after life, we climb the ladder, we become, we become more calm, we listen to our, listening to our conscience. We understand that love is the path. Now, even uh, in second order, right, we're still not perfect, right? We're still trying to get better. But the first order are pure spirits. And these spirits are pure energy. This is what, this is our goal. They possess an intellectual and moral superiority over all others. Pure spirits no longer have to suffer through reincarnations. First order spirits are described in question 113. So all of us one day will become pure spirits. We are in the middle of that process now. The speed of the process, how fast it takes us, how many lives it takes us, all depends on our hard work and dedication for how fast we are able to attain perfection. So Let's go to the next chapter in the book. This is the spirit realm. Let's talk about the spirit realm. Because really the spirit realm is the real world. That is the world. We are immortal. We will never die. The earth will fall away. The sun will go into a red dwarf and swallow the earth. The sun will recollapse and be dark. And we will still be alive. So think of that. So the entire universe is part of the spirit realm and the spirit realm is not just the universe that we detect right but all the universes we are told the spirit universe was created first and our physical and different different levels and different planes of that was was created afterward the denser universe were created after the spirit universe so what are the beginning of the universe? So Alan Kardec in the book Genesis, it's one of the main books that I would recommend everybody to read. Again, that's also by Alan Kardec, and you can order it uh, on the EDICI bookstore, and you can also get a PDF. It tells us what he learned from various spirits on how creation began. This is what he said. After having gone back, human limitation notwithstanding, Again, I'll tell you, this was written uh, in the 1850s. To the hidden fount from which worlds derive, like drops of water flowing from a river, let us consider the progress of the successive creations and their development. The primitive cosmic matter contained the material, fluidic and vital elements for all the universes that unroll their magnificence before eternity. It is the fertile mother of all things, the first grandmother, and what is more, the eternal genetrix. It means generation, always new generation. 
The substance for which all sidereal globes have come has not disappeared. The power is not dead, for it still gives birth incessantly to new creations and receives incessantly the reconstituted elements of the worlds that have been effaced from the book of eternity. So as I said before, our sun has a definite life, even our own universe. I, I don't know if anyone's, you know, recently seen very interesting science, you know, about our universe and how the universe, the Big Bang, and it grows, and our universe is in this section where there's light, but then the, the majority of the life of the universe will be as things get dark, and then, you know, the power runs out on all the stars, and the universe will just be dark. Well, that's not what's going to happen, because the spirit realm, will always reuse that energy. They will recreate what they need to create. We, and we may even not even be in this universe. In fact, as when uh, the Earth goes from a planet of atonement to a planet of regeneration, we will probably subtly come into a, a bit of a higher plane, maybe a different, a, a different plane of a universe. Maybe, maybe not. I am not sure. But I am guarantee you that we will be somewhere where there is life throughout the universe. And that's what the Spirit's book tells to us. tells us also that there's no really dark vacuum of space. It's all life. Now, this was told to us in the 1850s. Now, when you think about string theory, they say the same thing. The universe is full of stuff, right? There's really no vacuum there. There's strings. There's everything. So it shows you that I believe that. Genesis and other communications of the spirit world actually foreshadowed what was in string theory. And string theory says we there are multiple universes. All very interesting, is it not? So what spiritism, I think, teaches us is that our universe was born, probably from matter left over from an extinguished universe, in a cycle that will flow forever. As immortal spirits, we shall inhabit new universes. The element that created the universe is called cosmic fluid. From this, all else flows. It is everywhere and fills everything in different combinations and densities. It is responsible for all planets, suns, and life. Now, Genesis tells us more. This fluid penetrates bodies like an immense ocean. In it resides the vital principle that gives rise to the life of beings and per perpetuates it on each globe according to its condition. A principle which in its latent state lies dormant as long as no voice calls upon it. Now when they say no voice calls upon it, they mean a high spirit. High spirits will, through their will, through a group of high spirits many times, they will, they will take universal fluid, cosmic fluid, and they will shape it to their will, to their desires remember that this is why we're being trained on earth to use our minds to do great great things so by virtue of this universal vital principle every creature mineral plant animal or other because there are many other kingdoms of nature whose existence you do not even suspect knows how to appropriate the conditions for its existence and lifespan that's what genesis tells us Nothing written in Genesis, which is, I don't mean Genesis, the Bible book I'm talking about, written, the one written by, uh, codified by Alan Kardec from Messages from Other Spirits, violates what we know now. Isn't that interesting? And again, I will repeat what I said, string theory, multiple dimensions. Even the statement that we do not know other kingdoms of nature fits nicely what we've been told by the spirit world. Genesis was written in the 1850s. The vast discoveries, vir viruses, and other types of microbes still remain in the future at that time. Later pages tells us how when nebula forms, this is the pages in the Genesis, the energies released from the rough sphere veer off to create solar systems, suns, planets, and moons. Again, while not divulging specific new scientific facts, the broad outline of our creation is consistent to what we understand today. Which brings us to uh, and a very important point. The spirit world will only reveal to us what we are able to comprehend. They don't send us radical theories. The spirit world will send advanced spirits to first plant the seeds. So at a later date, we'll be able to understand what they are presenting. And they're not going to tell us, okay, this is how to create this new invention. No, they will, they will put different people, men and women on the earth, 
who know these things, right? And they'll reincarnate and then they'll be given the inspiration to reveal what was in their mind. Now let's talk about what Spiritism says about the planet Earth. Earth, Spiritism tells us very directly, Earth was not created in six days. It took billions of years. Spiritism doesn't force you to ignore the mass of data which makes the case for a slow evolution of our planet and life upon it. There are differences from what we learn. The first, and by far, is the major revelation that while evolution certainly causes changes to life on Earth over time, the process is guided and sometimes pushed along in a certain direction by the spirit realm. Using a set of divine laws given to by God, the spirit world is able to manipulate events and pathways to the creation of different forms of life on Earth. In the book, On the Way to the, on the, Way to the Light, which I recommend uh, everyone read. This is, to me, that was one of the first books I read after the Alan Kardec books, and it was just revelatory. And it really talked about how the spirit world guided the earth from the very beginning. So, and this was uh, psychographed by Chico Xavier, dictated to him by a spirit mentor, Emmanuel. And the originations of the earth and who guides us is revealed in this book. It's very interesting. This is what this is what, what was told to Chico Xavier. The tradition of the spirit world say that in the governance of all the phenomena of our system, there is a community of pure spirits chosen by the Supreme Lord of the universe, whose hand holds the guiding reins of life on all planetary collectivities. From what we've been told, this community made up of perfected angelic beings, of which Jesus is one of the divine men met in the vicinity of earth only twice in the course of the known millennia to decide urgent issues pertaining to the organization and direction of our planet. Now, when this was written, that was true. They also met later in 1969 for a third time. I'll carry on with the quote. The first meeting took place when the terrestrial orb detached from the solar nebula so that the demarcations of our cosmogonic system and the prototypes of life in the fiery matter of the planet could be set in space and time. The second occurred when the Lord's coming to the earth was determined in order to bring the immortal lessons of his gospel of love and redemption to the human family. So, we are told that the earth was deliberately formed for the express purpose to use our planet as a place for incarnated spirits. The master of the entire operation from setting our planet into orbit, along with other, other high spirits, the creation of the moon, manufacturing of the ozone layer to protect all organic forms to the beginning of life, the evolution of life till today is Jesus. He is our governor. He is he is our father in all sense of the world, of the word, I should say. <laughs> Jesus was chosen by God to be the Lord of Earth. He's also Lord of other planets, too. Jesus set forth the blueprints and utilized divine laws to construct an inhabitable you know, oasis where humans could evolve and thrive and learn. I also go through a lot of this in my book, Heaven and Below, which I... Uh, which is was told by Emmanuel to Chico Xavier. A lot of the same information, small little differences. One is, uh, but it's very good, is in Heaven Below was retold by other high spirits to the Reverend G. Bao Owen, who was an English vicar in the early 19th, uh, in the early 20th century, early, early 1900s, I should say. So this is why this is very interesting. So again, you should look at my book, Heaven and Below, and find out even more information, even from the, the wonderful Brazilian medium, Chico Xavier, and other Brazilian mediums. You can see things from different aspects. Uh, that's why spiritism is so exciting. Okay. So now, how was life manufactured? So the creation of life was not left to mere chance no matter what we are told by scientists saying well we started as you know amino acids and we got to be more complex and then boom you know life was formed well there was there's truth to that right 
But there was a plan that was followed. And on the way to the light lets us in at the beginning. This is, there's another quote. Like modern engineering, which constructs a building for seeing the tiniest requirement for its ultimate purpose, the artists from the spirit realm built the world of cells, in, initiating in prim, primeval days the construction of the organized intelligent forms of the centuries to come. Regarding the earliest cellular constructions, the idea of beauty was their main concern from the start. This is why throughout time, beauty combined with order has been one of the indelible marks of all creation. Forms for all the kingdoms of nature were studied and foreseen. The fluids of life were manipulated so they could be adapted to the physical conditions of the planet. Th thus, the cellular constructions were fashioned according to the capabilities of the Earth's environment. Everything obeyed a plan pre-established by the merciful wisdom of the Christ in accordance with the laws of the beginning and of the overall development, end quote. So what we were told is also models from other planets were used to form the basis of flora and fauna of Earth. The other thing I'd like to add right here is every kind of life form that we have here was always in the spirit world first. We are more like copies and we are copies that have been modified to fit uh, with, fit with the environmental laws of this planet. So when we think of dogs and tigers and cats and humans, or whatever, there are many other variations of us throughout the universe. <clears throat> As forms of life evolved throughout the various periods of Earth, starting with the Precambrian, small modifications were continually made to direct the evolutionary paths of creatures on Earth. What we call natural laws, the law uh, of evolution, Darwinian evolution, are in fact divine laws established when the universe was created were used in ways that we have not yet discovered to facilitate the entire arc of the Earth's existence. <clears throat> so, what's happened is, now, oh, first, let's go from the macro events. The macro events is the Earth created, let's say, dinosaurs, right? And the spirit was said, no, these aren't going anywhere. We're not going to, humans aren't going to live with the dinosaurs, so we will wipe them out. And I believe that that was done on a, uh, on a basis that, you know, wasn't done randomly. An asteroid didn't come and destroy the dinosaurs randomly. It was all foreseen and guided by the spirit realm. Now let's talk on the microscopic, on the, on the, on the micro level. Now I have read, well, when, 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 when there's birth, right, when we are in, in, into our mother's womb, and let's say someone's reincarnating, and let's say a person is going to be a very skilled surgeon. He's going to help many people. Spirits around there will actually go through and use the power of their will, their force, and they will actually, they will actually modify the DNA of that baby, so they'll have better coordination. You know, you know, uh, you know eye hand coordination, whatever it takes to be a good surgeon. So. With reading about those and other books, and you think about how they control life on Earth, you will see that they probably used the the regular laws of, of evolution, but they probably also did small small changes in DNA to get where what they want us to be. And all this, of course, took millions of years. Isn't, isn't that very interesting? And it makes a lot of sense. So now let's talk about what is the spirit world around the earth? <laughs> and Matthew says, uh, sorry, creationist. Yes. And well, the other thing is it, is, is it says is that a lot of times the spirit world will say, our physical earth is an imperfect copy of the spirit world. And if you go like into the lower levels of heaven, there are, and as Chico said, there are 50 to 100 years ahead of us in technology. So that's why when people come and they're reincarnated and new things are created, 
those technologies were all actually in the spirit world first on the lower levels of heaven. Those people were reincarnated, come here, and then they, then in, through in, inspiration or through the memories that are dug up and within their bodies, they come out and they create this. So the spirit world helps us on this higher plane of technology. So I thought that was very interesting for, for many people. So what's what's okay? So we're Earth. We understand our physical stuff. We've seen the pictures of the Earth from the Moon. We see where this 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 bright blue ball in the, in the middle of the solar system. You know, the ocean and land. How beautiful it is! And we also have to remember we can only see about one eighth around us. So what is really around us in these multi dimensions and and multi universes? So. So roughly the sphere of the influence of the earth can be broken down into three areas. First, at the highest level is what we consider heaven, right? Where good spirits ascend. Second is the lower zone, also called the umbral, the umbral in Portuguese, where we, where we the incarnates, live side by side with uh, you know, the more inferior spirits, at least the ones aren't ascended to heaven. And we, we swim in the sea of spirits, as I said before. And third is the abyss, as, as we call it, which is a kind of purgatory. It's not really hell, because there's no one who is ever condemned forever to hell. Because when you think about it, this is what, this is, you know, this is karma. This is, this is the love of God. This is why God loves us. We, he knows in, in, in some life, I'm sure it's, it's a previous life I've ever been told I've, I've screwed up and I probably screwed up so bad. I, I sure I've spent my time in, in that, in the dark abyss, right? So let's talk about it one at a time. Let's talk, let's start with the abyss, which is at the surface of the earth and below. Now, remember these spirits, you, a spirit cannot rise above their level. So if you're in the abyss, you cannot go higher. If you're in the lower zone, you cannot go to heaven. If you're in, but you can go down. If you're in heaven, you can't go above that level you're in, but you can go down to the lower zone and to the abyss. So the abyss, it's where the opposite of the golden rule reigns. Others do unto you have as you have done unto others. The spirit realm doesn't call it hell, as I said before, for it imply a location where errant souls go and stay permanently. The spirit realm calls it the darkness or the abyss. Sometimes I see it mentioned as a type of purgatory. For spirits are sent to unalterable situations. They're never sent to unalterable situations. It's all dynamic. And the time you spent and the time that a spirit would spend in a the, the abyss or the darkness it all depends on them if they want to say, oh, you know, I'm with I'm with these people who treat me terrible. And I guess they treat me terrible because that's how I've treated other people. And maybe that's not the path. Well, that's what the spirit world is waiting for, that little light to go on and say, oh, maybe I shouldn't take advantage of everyone else. Because truly, I believe, you know, is, you know, is purgatory, the, the abyss is really where you're treated as others, as you have treated others in your past. So think about that. So when so God wishes all of us to eventually ascend to a pure spirit, right? So if, even though the journey may be torturous and painful, whenever we find ourselves in real spiritual pain, it is usually because a nice suggestion wasn't absorbed. Whenever we feel really guilty or we did something, I bet if you look back, you'd say, oh, I should have. I knew, I knew that wasn't right. I should have followed my conscience. And this is one of the things we have to learn here is to follow our conscience. So the darkness, the abyss, is really that, that weighty, sharp weapon because not, be, not because that God or the spirit world did it because they like to see us hurt. It's because we didn't follow the better suggestions. We didn't follow our conscience. We rationalize as I've done in you know in my youth all the time why I could do something even though I shouldn't have right I mean we've all done that and so therefore if we don't listen and learn the easy way guess what we'll learn the hard way and that's what's so intelligent about the spirit and God so think about this 
think how God makes us perfect. In our movies, when there's a bad situation, there's a good guy comes in there. And what does a good guy do? He kills the bad guy, right? Jesus never did that. Jesus doesn't kill the bad guy. How does, how does the spirit world, how do they fight evil? Well, the answer is, Evil is used to fight evil. This is what the darkness and the abyss is for. Okay, you're evil? Huh. Go with others like you. See how you like it. If you want that as a way of life and be there for a thousand years, be my guest. At some point, you will get tired of, of people treating you like you have treated others. Now, let's, in Henri's book... He, in his book, Liberation, which is a great book, by the way. Uh, I think it's like the fifth. I can't remember what order that is. I'm sure someone else would know. Book on all the Henri Luis's books, which I recommend. It starts with Nolte Lars. I said at the beginning of the program, we just actually watched that tonight. Wonderful movie. You can look it up. Also called Astral City. It's only like $3.99 to rent. I bought it because we watch it at least once a year. So in Henri Luis's book, liberation he travels on the mission to the abyss which is under the earth's core right he describes the landscape this is what he says the sun the sun's light looked different a gauge haze clouded the entire sky volatation which is uh the ability to move by thought now if, uh, if you've heard my other talks is in the spirit world the speed of light is not the speed limit it's your ability to think right you move by thought i want to move to point x from point y you think that volatation was impossible he said the vegetation looked sinister and afflicted the trees were almost bare and nearly dry branches looked like arms lifted in supplication large foreboding birds that looked sort of like ravens were craw kind like little winged monsters eyeing his Pray. The most troubling, however, was not the bleak landscape. It was somewhat some similar to others I had experienced, but the piercing appeals coming from the from the mire, human-like groans came in every tone. It's not something like the you know the different levels of hell from you know uh, from one of the the books uh, which I, I can't remember the name, but it will come to me. Um, Dante's different levels of hell. It's, uh, I think Dante was inspired, inspired by the spirit world. These scenes could be described, could be out of any of the movies or books that we have seen and read about hell, correct? A desolate landscape, dry and populated with revolting creatures. Now, why are they revolting creatures? Because they look like they, how they think they should look. Remember when we, when we die, we begin to look as how we think we should look. And if you're an evil person, you start to think of yourselves as evil and you look pretty bad. Henri also knows, notices gangs which are wandering around the landscape. Again, this is what's so interesting about the dark abyss and the lower zone. There's actually life in organized gangs. You know, it's not like there's everyone is some of those books where everyone's like wandering around like a zombie. No, there's cities, there's industry, there's stuff going on here. But it's all it's all like living in North Korea, right? You're you're not a happy camper. So this is what he says about the gangs. From time to time, hostile groups of deranged spirit entities passed in front of us, indifferent and incapable of noticing our presence. They were speaking loudly in broken but intelligible Portuguese. So they were at a level in the the abyss that was probably below uh, the nations where people died. Uh, in Brazil or Portugal. Their laughter had be betraying deplorable conditions of ignorance. They were dressed in sinister attire and carried implements for fighting and wounding. So let's think about that. What's the purpose of the darkness? The question is answered in the book Beneath Heaven and Earth by Francisco C. Xavier, dictated by the spirit Andre Louise. Andre asks his team leader, why are there areas of purgatory and this is the answer he receives or does not stop being sick just because it escapes from his cage hell is a creation of imbalanced souls who have come together in one place just as the miry 
bog is a collection of slimy nuclei that congregate together. When without a consciousness inclined towards good or towards evil, we pe perpetuate this or that crime, we really can wound and harm someone. But more than that, we are wounding or harming ourselves. If we kill our neighbor, our victim will receive so much sy sympathy from others that he or she will soon be reestablished with the, the laws of equilibrium that govern us and will often come to our aid before we can re recompose the threads of our conscience. When we harm this or that person, we actually harm our own soul first because we lower our dignity as eternal spirits, delaying our sacred opportunities for growth. So what are they telling us? There are many levels of the darkness, none of them pleasant. Only those who are compelled to live with souls similar to themselves are sent there. As a spirit lingers, only until the time he or she comprehends from the bottom of their soul that love, not hatred, envy, revenge, or any other form of domination of others is actually the true path. Now, let's talk about the lower zone. So the lower zone, right, is the crust of the earth where we are. And as, uh, and as uh, Chico Xavier used to say, the lower zone starts at right there, tip of your nose. It's, we're all... We're all surrounding it. So Andre Louise, who actually woke up in the lower zone after his death on the operating room, describes one small part of it. This is what he said when he was in the lower zone, he, how he described what he felt. Now, there's many different areas of the lower zones. There's different levels. There's different you know, there's, there's organized cities. There's organized governments on different, different places. You'll be surprised. This is what he said. Actually... I felt like a prisoner trapped. Oh, wait, I see a comment here. There's something like that. Don, yes, Dante's Inferno. Uh, exactly, Matthew. I'm glad you, yeah, you reminded me. And now here's Gabriel says, so we, we mustn't, so mustn't we treat others as bad as they are, rather that we have to treat them as good as we are. I think that's a really good point. We, we need to treat others as we would want to be treated, right? That's the golden rule. Now, in our minds, do they deserve to be treated nicely? No, and, and it also means that we don't have to be uh, pacifistic. We don't have to be, you know, pushovers. If someone needs to go to jail because they did something wrong, well, yeah, then we take the guy, put him in handcuffs, escort them to jail, right? But what you try to do, it, it's all, uh, it's all depends on the situation, right? So if someone gr grates on you and gossips about you and does mean things, right? That doesn't mean that you have to go out of your way to treat them badly. You can try to ignore them or you try to talk to them, say, why are you doing this? Many times you'll probably get no good answer. Then you just have to ignore them as well as you can. It doesn't mean that you go back to them and say, okay, well, I can gossip about you too. And I can, I can put you down and make you feel bad or I can key your car, right? Right. So those things you don't, you, you don't do. I hope that that helps. Uh, exactly. I, you probably made a statement, Gabrielle, and you already knew anyway, so I apologize for telling you what you already knew because I'm sure so many people here are... Uh, uh, it's amazing how many people I talk to afterwards and, and I get comments and people already have uh, taken the good lessons. So this is what Andre Louis said. Actually, I felt like a prisoner trapped behind dark bars of horror. With my hair on end, my heart pounding, and scared stiff, I often cried out like a madman. I begged for mercy and clamored against the painful despondency that had taken hold of my spirit. But when the loud cries didn't fall on an implacable silence, they were answered by lamenting voices even more pitiful than my own. At other times, sinister laughter rent the prevailing silence. I thought that some unknown companion out there was a prisoner of insanity. Diabolical forms, ghastly faces, and animal-like countenances appeared from time to time, increasing my panic. Now, it doesn't seem like a great place, does it, right? The lower zone, or uh, as I said before, called the Umbrella in Portuguese, is comprised of many areas, not just a, a strange dark dimension that exists parallel to right here on the surface of the Earth. 
The other thing I'd like to say is, if you ever read about NDEs, near-death experience, well, uh, thanks thanks for always uh, help us out, Brian. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm always glad. Actually, I'm glad when you, you help more than anything else. Thank you for your blessings. If you look at NDEs, you'll find that there's a, probably the, the majority of them, a good percentage of them, are people that go to heaven, they have their life reviewed, they find out wonderful things about the universe. But the subset where they go to places that they described almost to the T, as, as Andre Luis described, the lower zone, and there's other descriptions in Alan Kardec's uh, Heaven and Hell. There's description of that. And then also in another book, I'd like to read you about description. This is, this, I tell you, this is another great book. I would recommend to everybody. It's called, and it's in English. It's uh, again by a Brazilian woman, Yvonne A. Piera. It's called Memoirs of a Suicide. And the main protagonist of the book, Camilo Castelo Branco, he committed suicide when he was going blind because of syphilis describes what it was like awakening in the graveyard where he was buried. This is what he said. Sobbing uncontrollably, I bent over the grave that held my remains, contorting myself in terrifying convulsions of pain and rage, wallowing in a crisis of diabolical fury. I understood that I had committed suicide, that I was in the grave, but that nevertheless I continued to live and suffer even more, so much more than before, of similarly so much more than before my cowardly and thoughtless act. So, so this Camilo, while his body six feet underground was deteriorating, felt that he was alive with all of the loneliness, pain, and suffering it entails. Walking on the face of the earth while incarnate visitors to familiar graves passed through him, oblivious to his sufferings. Camille then left the, the cemetery trying to ascertain, well, what was this world that he had died into? This is what he says. I continued to roam around aimlessly, feeling my way along the streets. Unacknowledged by friends and admirers, a poor blind man humiliated in the afterlife thanks to the dishonor of having committed suicide. A beggar in the spirit world, famished in the darkness, a tortured wandering ghost without a home, without shelter in the immense and infinite world of spirits, exposed to deplorable dangers, hounded by the malefic entities, criminals of the spirit world who love to use hateful traps to capture individuals going through tormenting situations like mine in order to enslave them and increase the obsessing hordes that destroy Earth's societies and ruin men and women submitting them to the vilest temptations with their deadly influence. Now, I've always talked about this before, right? We're influenced by good and bad all the time. This is why we're here. We're here so we can use our conscience to take off those, take, you know, filter out those bad influences. And I'll also say another thing about uh, Camilo Bronco. He was actually known as the Balzac. He was he, he, of his time in Portugal. He, you know, I, I would love to meet him if when I go back to Peru. His book, uh, Yvonne Piera doesn't psychograph her books as much as she kind of goes and kind of lives the books. I, I'm probably not explaining that very well. But uh, Camilo Bronco was so brave and courageous to write everything he did wrong and write the, his, his life and his life after death like he did. Uh, I cannot say enough about what a brilliant... Uh, spirit, uh, Camilo Bronco is. It, it's just amazing. So, as I said before, the lower zone is all around us, teeming with life, not in the benevolent kind. In the book, No Solar, Sacrograph of Chico Xavier, inspired by Andre Luis. Andre, after being rescued from the umbral, the lower zone, by the kind spirits of the heavenly city, asked, why must there be a place like the lower zone? Right? They are Why do we imagine that when we imagine each of us is wearing a dirty garment that must be washed in the waters of thief? That is our, our woven by our, our past life. 
as we share in the blessing of a newly earthly opportunity once more, we usually forget our essential purpose. And instead of purifying ourselves with, through the effort of the cleansing process, we become even more soiled by going deeper into debt, which he's saying moral debt, and thus imprisoning ourselves in general, genuine slavery. Now, if we return to the world seeking a way to rid ourselves of our impurities because they are out of harmony with a higher plane, how can we expect to enter the sphere of light in an even worse state than before? Therefore, the umbral is a region intended for flushing away of negative mental residues. It is a sort of purgatorial zone where one gradually burns off the refuse of the bulk of illusions acquired after having degraded the sublime opportunity of an earthly life. Boy, you can't say it better, of course. When the spirits dictate, when they say things, everything is, is you, you should listen and, and read it over and over again because there's so many more hints of what they're saying. Leasis explains to Andre that the umbral begins at the crust of the earth and continues higher until it reaches the boundary of the celestial cities a large area that contains all those who couldn't successfully complete their mission souls that retain their passions for material goods hatred of their enemies and a host of other obsessions that we are all better without laesis emphasizes this point by describing the criticality of that zone why this zone is important this is what he says the umbral is a region of profound importance for those still on earth for it embodies everything that is useless to the more highly evolved life. Consider how wisely divine providence has acted in allowing the creation of such a zone around the planet. There are legions of irresolute and ignorant souls who are not wicked enough to be reg regulated to the colonies of the most dolorous expiation, nor are they sufficiently virtuous to be admitted to the higher spheres. They represent the ranks of the inhabitants of the umbral, and they are close companions of incarnate human beings, separated from them only by vibratory laws. Now the phrase, embodies everything that is useless, is the key. Useless are material goods. Useless are the passions we retain. The revenge we are plotting, even up to our in, untimely death. Useless is our quest for a lavish lifestyle that compromises compromise our ideals and force us to ignore our conscience in order to gain a moment of wealth, wealth that is no longer with us while we reside in the umbral. Again, as in the abyss, a spirit only resides in the umbral until a personal decision to seek the way of the light is sincerely made. Now let's talk about heavenly or celestial cities. And of course, in this book, I don't go through in great detail. Again, as I said before, in my book, Heaven and Below, I talk a lot more about heaven. Also, I talk about heaven and, and the areas around it in my book, Explore Your Destiny. So, but in Spiritism 101, I'm just trying to give everyone a survey, kind of a, a little peek of information. You know, it's a short book. I think, what, how many pages? is less than 100 pages. It's only 72 pages. 71, 72 pages, and um, it's a good introduction. So let's talk about heavenly or celestial cities. The quest to learn what heaven is like starts with Alan Kardec's The Spirits Book, right? The idea of heaven, and again, this is the book you really want to know. This is the book you want. The idea of heaven is not a major preoccupation of the spirits. They take it as a matter of fact, right? It's like, hey, I'm on earth. Earth is here. It's not a big deal. A place where they still work and learn and hope to improve themselves. Heaven is not, as I said before, uh, the uh, you know the Elysian uh, plains, right, where you do nothing but drink and sun yourself and and play the harp. Although even the most lowest rungs of heaven is much superior to our planet, and yes, there are many levels, but how many is not known to us. But in the books uh, that I talk about in Heaven and Below. Uh, they, the spirits that talk to Reverend G. Bowen say there's like 10 levels before you get to the levels where you're kind of beyond, not so far beyond the earth, but where you're really, you're kind of graduate and you're actually going to actually going to work and take place in the creation of other worlds and the leadership of the, the evolution of life on other planets and things like that. So 
Let's start with the at the question at the end of the book in uh, question number at the spirits book question number ten sixteen one thousand and sixteen. In what sense is the he word heaven to be understood? And this is the answer. Do you suppose it to be a place like the Elysian fields of the ancients, ancients, where all good spirits are crowded together pell mell with no other care than that of enjoying throughout eternity a passive felicity? No, it is universal space. It is the planets, the stars, and all the worlds of high degree in which spirits are in the enjoyment of all their faculties without having the tribulations of material life or the sufferings inherent in the state of inferiority. It means inferiority is us here physically on earth. So it's not the Elysian fields. It's not the place where you leisurely waste away your days until affinity. Another book, as I said before, was Nosolar, and he talked about a place when he arrived, and he, he describes his first impression of after the shelter he was taking during his recovery. This is his impression on one of the first levels of heaven, Nosolar, which is a heavenly city, which was above Rio de Janeiro. The spectacle of the streets impress, impressed me, wide avenues bordered with trees, Pure air, an atmosphere of profound spiritual tranquility. However, there was no sign of inactivity or idleness. Think of this one. For the city streets, there are cities, were crowded. Countless individuals were coming and going. Some seemed to be thinking of far off places, but others looked at me warmly. So in all the descriptions we've read so far, there exists a sense of organizations. And I talk about this even in my uh, my uh, the, my most latest books, The Thousand Year March, where the spirit world is organized, right? Uh, the, the big difference is the people who are in charge are loving, benevolent, very humble people who are in places of power because they have earned that right, unlike on Earth. I could go on forever about that, but why bother? Because it's all temporary. So there's an organization. There's structures representing organizations. There's well-planned roads, homes. There's water, right? Heaven is a beautiful place to live. Now, Andre Luis describes the countryside. The scenery in front of me was of sublime beauty. The forest was in full bloom, and the fresh air was embalmed with an intoxication frag fragrance. It was all of the extraordinary gift of color and mellow light. A large river wound its way lazily between luxuriant grassy banks sprinkled with blue flowers. The water ran by so peacefully, so crystalline, that it seemed tinted in sky blue, mirroring the color of the firmament. Wide pathways cut through the green landscape. Leafy trees were planted at regular intervals along them, offering friendly shade like pleasant shelters in the light of the comforting sun. Fancifully shaped benches invited one to rest. So this, this description of the vividness of the colors and natural beauty parallels other descriptions of heaven by people who've had near-death experiences. So just as there are many areas to the abyss and the lower zone, there are many different celestial cities. Each has its own distinct character, and people who speak the same language usually group together in various heavenly cities. It's only as you rise above and go to higher levels of, of uh in heaven, and I talk about that in my book, Heaven and Below, that you kind of lose your, your needing to think in a certain language and you gain ability to, to, to either think with thoughts, direct thoughts, and images. In fact, uh, as was told by Ron G. Bowen, the higher spirits use the combination of both to make sure that the message was received correctly. They will tell you, okay, you need to go to this place, and then they'll show you an image of that place. So they, they use both. That's as you get higher and higher. On the lower levels of heavens, it's the people who were, you know, let's say in Brazil, are raised above, or let's say the people like in around LA or, you know, Denver or whatever, they rise and they, they'll speak English for the most part. The other thing is, too, they always describe colors and say you can't see them, right? They have such a range of colors and spectrums. So, the glimpses of the spirit is presented to the way that we may decide how we ourselves to comport ourselves on earth. And I believe the spirit is telling us so is telling us now time, you know, since the 1850s in the time where we can understand it, 
that this message has come to us, given our level of culture and our technological level, so that we can say, okay, I'm starting to understand the process, why I'm here, right? I'm beginning to understand there is a purpose to my life. What it needs to be done with my life. It's up to each, all, to all of us to decide for ourselves what we want to do. Do we want to be on earth to grow spiritually? Or do we want to be on earth just to accumulate more goods and as much power as we, we, we want? So I'm going to leave you there. I want to say, bless all of you. I can't, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be with you tonight on this April 28th. Again, please go to my website, nwspiritism.com. If you like, explore my, my books on there. Explore the books by Alan Kardec, Chico Xavier, anything you can. Um, I have a BitChute channel which uh, and a YouTube channel. You can get to those sites from nwspiritism.com. Spiritism.com. This video, please share this video to other Facebook pages if you if you think it's been of, of help to you and you want to share it to your friends. But tell people about the YouTube channel. I'll, I'll put this video on the YouTube channel. I'll also put it on the BitChute channel. It, it goes. I have many other videos on the YouTube channel. I have some of them that have been translated into Portuguese with subtitles in Portuguese, but I have like a lot of four minute, eight minute uh, videos on different aspects of spiritism and um, all sorts of things. So I'm trying to, to, to give people a, a very wide range of, of help for what you can use to learn about spiritism. And again, don't hesitate, please, to email me or put comments or put comments in YouTube. I try to read each one of them. If they have questions, I try to answer them. If, uh, and, if you have other ideas for things you want me to talk about, fine. Right now, I will keep going through this book, Spiritism 101. Again, of course, this is free on PDF on my website, Spiritism and the Spirit World Around Us, which is there is a link on again on the right-hand navigation side. So I want to say God bless to everyone. Thanks for being with me uh, tonight on this wonderful Sunday. And remember, every Sunday night, we'll have this program. God bless. <music>